Hi friends and our users, interested data scientists around the world. Uh, welcome to another Shiny Developer Series live stream. My name is Eric and um, I do admit, um, ever since the week started, um, this is around the time of night, I am definitely a little more tired because you know, the little kiddos started school, like really started. They could actually go back this week and I usually am up quite early to get their uh, breakfasts and lunches ready, so um, certainly I'll, I'll 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 be here tonight, and we'll see how long it lasts. But uh, <laughs> it's a it's a different feeling when you have to get up that early. <laughs> so anyway, welcome welcome all, and we um, we're gonna kind of take more of a learning trip today, so to speak. If you saw my description, where the last gosh, I even lost count um, how many streams we did of the shiny cow project and like i said at the end of that last one it's certainly not complete yet by any means but i think i learned a lot just getting to that initial version and um it seems to be pretty well received and i'm excited to, to see the positive reception to that so let's say hello to our friends in the chat so um Hello, S. Bates, welcome back. And Monica, community time. Great, great to have you here too. Hope you're doing well. And um, you had a, a fun uh, knitting and sewing stream that I tuned in a few days ago. That was, that was good fun. And um, yeah, we'll see if others uh, trickle in. But like I said, today we're gonna, or tonight, we're gonna learn a new package, relatively new, that I got wind of from a couple reasons. Um, one, I'm pretty connected with the author of this package based on some previous collaborations for the Shiny Dev series and all around really smart guy that I've met at various uh, Art Studio conferences. And second, this app, this package that we're going to look at was a fundamental building block to a really cool idea that got a lot of attention in the shiny community and the art community in general. Um, and I'll kind of show you those motivations here as we get going here. So let me put my bits here, get to the desktops and we'll get the VS code in a little bit. Let me first uh, remind all of you that um, if you didn't catch any of the shiny Cal journey live, I have all of them on the uh, you, my uh, YouTube channel for the Shiny Dev series. All of them are on a custom playlist. I will put that here in the chat in case anybody wants to 
bookmark those, but you can see we had uh, quite a few sessions um, going from the first steps, which was a while back, all the way to our deployment. So yeah, it's uh, definitely been a, a fun journey there. And now we're gonna learn about some new uh, cool stuff that we might be able to enhance this app in the future as well as some others. So what am I referring to here? So there is a cool package um, from Colin Fay. He is the author of Golem, along with the team at Think R, which is the framework I use to um, wrap my shiny applications as an R package. And he made an experimental package of about half a year ago or so, judging by the commits here, um, called Brochure. You know, this is a side tangent, but um, I had a I had a call with one of our very high level uh, directors at the day job and we were kind of telling them about the, the tools and capabilities we're working on this year and some of the cool ones we finished up last year. And um, we had a, a slide about my very, very big production shiny app, the biggest I've ever created. Probably the second biggest in the entire company, if I judge by lines of code and just the amount of commits involved. But uh, anyway, we were, I was giving him a small taste of that. And he didn't like the name of it. He thought the name was pretty bad. And I just say this as like, I am somebody who just cannot name anything very well. Like, I, I just have a, I have a rough time with names. So um, I definitely envy others that are more creative in that, in that stuff. So Brochure is a pretty cool name. Um, so what what is brochure if you want to know it is a way to create what colin is referring to as native multi-page shiny applications now even if you don't know a lot about shiny other than what you've seen me do um you you may know that there are certainly ways to have what we call tabs in your ui like any web page you can have a navigation bar at the top and you know, have various words there that go to different parts of the app. But in a traditional Shiny app, those are still the same application and kind of web process under the hood. And there isn't really an elegant way to give people a link to like a specific page in your app um, to get it loaded correctly. You can do it. There are some kind of hacks around it, but it's not truly a multi, you know, page setup. It's more just kind of like showing you different things via CSS and HTML stuff. So um, Colin, who definitely delves into a lot of other JavaScript and web development frameworks as part of his daily work, I believe, um, at ThinkR, he thought, well, maybe there would be a cool way to make a truly native multi-page shiny app and that's how brochure came about now this is all speculation on my end i haven't actually talked to colin directly about brochure although i there are plans to have him back on the on the dev series um but basically what it boils down to is instead of being a traditional shiny app he's calling this a brochure app and it's basically as, as the readme says here kind of a series of pages that have a distinct link in it but they also have their own UI and server-side functions. So that's interesting, right? Typically in a Shiny app, you have one main UI and one main server, although you can break them up components of it with modules. This is slightly different. It is literally like you can combine these different brochure apps into one larger app but each of these processes when the user clicks on various parts are going to have their own separate r process their own separate ui um, that's being navigated to now at the day job i don't really have a use case for this yet although i think i might later on but i think i definitely have a use case for this for the aforementioned shiny cow project because the, the main attraction right now with Shiny Cow is, of course, the calendar itself. At least the, the what I'll call the data science uh, calendar. But I would be remiss to say that 
that was definitely not my only thing I wanted to do with this. Um, the One of the biggest reasons I started that project was to help out my friends from the Linux community, uh, from Martin Wimpress's community, Wimpy's World, that uh, Monica is um, definitely a, a part of with me. And I want to add some other cool bits to this. I want to add a way for people to have an admin interface to this and literally build their own calendar from it, all within the same place, but a different part of the app. And I don't feel like making one major app that has these individual modules to take care of it. I think it'd be cool to treat them as separate apps, but still have them as if they're a part of a same overall framework. And that's where I thought Brochure would be a great fit here. And the, the person I'm referring to in the art community that did use Brochure for a real project is uh, Jacqueline Nolis. She is actually a co-author of the um, um, uh, data, Getting Started in Data Science book um, that's gotten a lot of great attention, but she made uh, a package and an application called GGIRL, which is a really fun project. It's a way to have a plot made with ggplot2, which of course is one of the most popular visualization packages in R, and get a postcard out of it. But the app actually takes care of once you have a plot to be able to translate that into the required image and integrate with the Stripe API to process an actual payment securely from you, the user. And then it, it does a bunch of API stuff to actually send that to a vendor to print out that image that you created and then send that to somebody as a postcard. Like an, a genius idea. I absolutely love it. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. But the interface to, to GGIRL is an app made with the brochure package. So the package that I'm, I'm showing here, once you install and you can just run a simple function after you make your plot, um, like GG art print, you just supply a few parameters and then it kicks off this shiny app easily in your, in your web browser. So that's doing a lot of stuff under the hood, right? Like um, it's, it's taking a plot, it's interacting with Stripe API, it's interacting with probably a bunch of other APIs to process that request. So I saw some parallels to what I want to do with the um, with the um, with the calendar project and be able to give an admin type interface that might interact with an API on say GitHub or other services to let there be more customization. So that's what I want to try this with down the road. But at first, I got to figure out what the heck brochure is all about and how it works and how it might fit into the way I did Shiny Cow. And um, yeah, Ace Bates, um, he, you mentioned that I've been wanting to get one of these because um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And actually, um, the winners of the recent, uh, all the contestants, I think, of the recent sliced data science competition are getting custom artwork created with GGIRL as part of their like, uh, prize for being part of the competition. So I'm I'm definitely gonna maybe surprise a few friends with one of these, um, make a, an, R, an artastic uh, postcard or something, GGIRL. So, so, okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to literally try out brochure interactively in my um, new, um, container setup and see how far I get. I'm probably gonna fail a few ways, but that's the way we learn, right? Try try and do. Um, not always perfect the first time. So um, if I thought about doing Slice, I've actually been very uh, eager to try and get on season two. So season one just wrapped up. Um, it sounds like the hosts, uh, Nick and Meg, are gonna take a, a little bit to to decompress because they did a whole ton of work behind the scenes to make all that happen and you could definitely tell by the quality of it um, but yeah i i've been looking at the application um how to apply for you basically have to do some machine learning on a 
a sample data set and kind of show your workflow and how you how you um, go about those analyses. So I'm definitely gonna try that out. Whether I get on the season or not, who knows? There's a lot of great people that sounds like they wanna come back, so that's their call. But if I do get on, it'll definitely be for the, um, representing the, uh, the, the techies out there who do statistics and data science for their day job, but they also dabble into a lot of Linux and media stuff like I do. Like, um, like I'm a podcaster, right? So, or streamer, so that'd be fun to, to throw my hat in there and see where I stack up. But uh, we'll see, time will tell. So let's get to, uh, let's get to some coding, shall we? Get the VS Code up here. So I'm kind of going a little big with this to start with in the sense that um, I'm trying it out with Golem right now even though it's going to be a little different in Golem than a, than a typical Shiny app. But since Shiny Cal is already a Golem app, I've got to, I got to figure out how does this really work. So I'm going to try stuff out. And all I did before the stream was get my dev container set up, um, get Golem, Shiny, and Brochure installed so that I'm ready to go with taking examples from the README and incorporating them into Golem, even just as a very basic example. And what I'll do for this is I might have a little fun with it along the way, uh, maybe in the future streams. I am going to make a separate app out of this project that it'll be kind of fun. It's going to eventually scrape data from my favorite 8-bits uh, platformer or action series of all time, Mega Man. I grew up in Mega Man, it is by far my favorite franchise. Mario ain't got nothing on Mega Man, so we're gonna do a Mega Man app out of this um, eventually. So, what I wanna do now is I want to first, we're gonna make a minimal app with brochure that's not quite the goal framework yet, just to get things underway. So the way I'm gonna do that here, so I'm gonna make a new file, a new script. And yes, I am doing VS Code for this um, for now, but if I run into any snags of doing brochure with this, I will pivot over to our Studio server in my companion container, but I think it'll be okay. I've been using VS Code for a bit. So let's get this safe first. I'm gonna put this in my dev folder because it's um, not gonna be a, a major part of the, the, the um, polished version of this. I always have very creative names I'm gonna call brochure play. We're gonna load brochure. Get that going, make sure that loads. Yep. Okay, we got that in. And I'm simply gonna copy paste the example from the README and make sure it can um, it can actually work. That will be from the other side. Here we are. It's a very basic example. It just has a first page of a plot output, finding the iris data set, and then the second page is just simply the UI itself. Nothing happened in there. So let's see what trouble we get into by running this. Here we go. Well, of course, um, we should probably load shiny as well. <laughs> I thought it was loaded automatically, but apparently not. So, all right, let's try that again. Okay. So that is the first page. Now, the question is, how do we get to the second page? Um, here, when you run an app, um, when you want an app in VS Code or even our studio itself in what's called the viewer pane, you don't get like a easy way to get to the address. But what I can do here, I'm gonna pop that into my external browser and then we're gonna go there and experiment with the uh, endpoint. So let's flip the view to that. So this is the same app. Um, I just have it on my Firefox browser and going I'm going to look on the other side to my uh, code. 
the reference to the second page should just work like this where we have page two and there you go so very fancy right or not fancy but the idea is that the way we got to that second page of the app was not clicking through a traditional nav bar it was actually in the in the url literally typing page two so they are distinct apps we can go back to the um, other the main page and we go back to the first page so these are separate processes you can kind of tell by it kind of has a little half second or a little less than that refresh of the page when you go to the different parts although let's let's see if that yeah so there was a slight gray there and then actually um, went to that second page so okay the um hello world like example actually works that's good vs code here and let's start let's start exploring different things that are going to have to work to make brochure play nicely with shiny cow down the road um the first step is let's get this into the golem way of thinking so for that we're gonna this is gonna be jumping around a bit so i apologize for that but we're gonna go back to the readme and read the part about Golem. So of course, since it's the same author as Golem, he's gonna talk about how you actually get it into Golem. Now I'm gonna do a quick check here and make sure there isn't a... Yeah, so sometimes when people make packages in the community, they'll have a um, package down website, which kind of renders the package documentation, but because this is obviously very early days, I don't think uh, Colin has that yet. I think he did a blog post about it. And we may go to that eventually. But let's look at the readme first and make sure we have that going. So with Golem, a couple things we need to do. We actually have to remove um, one of the files, the app server file. And apparently the top of app UI. So I think I know what he means here. But we're gonna find out so the first step let's open up our VS code here let's modify app UI first so what Colin is saying is actually get rid of the UI the overall application UI so bye bye it is gone so we're gonna save that but he did mention in the readme keep the add external resources which is a way to put assets that you might have maybe image files or other files into the head of the html so that you have that available in an easy way so we're gonna keep that bit save it and then we are actually going to wipe out um, app server let's just go to uh, well, let's first stop the uh, process there Let's um, remove that from our directory. There we go. So now we've done the, the basic parts. And then the next step is to create separate R scripts that denote kind of the different pages of the app. So let's try that based on our hello world example. We are going to um, try that out. So um, I think what we can do is we're going to save this file a couple times, but we are going to simply put this in the R subdirectory, and then we're going to say um, be very unoriginal first page R. Although, actually now I'm a little confused already. Um, we actually might only need one file for this. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. 
we'll see. We'll keep it like this. We're going to see if it breaks when we do this. But then the idea is now in the um, run app uh, script, which is right here, we need to replace shiny app with brochure app. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to get the hang of this. So I'm going to I'm going to copy what he has in the in the GitHub readme. And we're going to put it in here and then we're going to start modifying stuff. So there wasn't a whole lot of change there. The change is over here with brochure app. So brochure app is the wrapper function. Um, but then it has separate functions for each page. So in the in the more sophisticated README example, he has three um, page functions, if you will: the home page, the login page, and a logout page. And simply has separate um, function calls to each. So actually, um, Ace Bates, you have a great point here. It is. I would say very similar to modules, but the difference is like you, you're pointing out, modules themselves are still part of an overall R process of the Shiny app. These are separate R processes, almost like separate Shiny apps entirely. And of course, within each of those, we could use modules as much as we want. And we can spread those out as needed, but each page is getting its own mini Shiny app. So we're definitely I think down the road going to mix and match the modules that I currently have in Shiny Cal in the appropriate way. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna at least play with this framework. So I think now I'm answering my own question of how this works, where we're gonna have a separate script that's gonna act like our home uh, page, if you will, and see how that goes here. So I'm gonna. I'm off screen. I'm looking at the README to. Uh, yeah, okay. I see. I think I kind of see what I have to do here. So each page is like a function in brochure. So let's let's try this stuff out. So we're going to first um, take out the for this first page, we're going to basically take out the, the wrapper stuff here. We're gonna take out the second page and we're gonna put that in a separate script. All right, let's clean up the indentation here. Oh, that, why did it do that? Oh, sometimes I, I don't know why VS Code, sometimes my indentation stuff goes a little crazy here. All right, well, we'll have to indent that. Okay, not perfect, but whatever um so that is first page but we need to make a function out of it that's the step i'm missing so we're gonna be very original here and call that page one do a function with no arguments and then we're gonna throw this stuff in Let's see if that works Okay, and yes, it messed up my indentation. I'm gonna have to work on that off screen, of course. Okay, so that's page one. So I think we can just try this first and then make sure this piece works. And then once this it's functionally the way we want, then we'll start adding more pages in here. Okay, so that's saved. We go back in Golem. The way I run the dev version of an app is through the run dev script in the dev folder. And this should, famous last words, um, just link to what we need to here. Let's clear this out. Let's give it a shot. Hey, I think we got it. So it's the same kind of setup. It's got its separate tab and the first page loaded. So good stuff. Let's try adding that second page in um, through the, the paradigm that we're dealing with here. So let me start minimizing or getting rid of some bits we don't need here. 
then we're gonna go back to that uh, dev script and we're gonna save out the second portion of it to the second page file. All right. When you do the container stuff, you have to type the file names a little more verbosely here. Uh, page two. And then, second page, and instead of brochure app, we're going to use the same idea. We're going to call that page score two. Okay, let's throw this stuff in. Let's, there we go. Oh, the indentation, that definitely hurts me. Okay. Eesh. Yeah, whatever, I'll clean it up later. Um, so, it's, oh, we have errors. Okay, it's telling me I messed something up. I have extra parentheses, that's it. Yep, good catch there. All right, cool. So now we go back to run app. Let's do page score two. So in this page function, the href argument is kind of being that last part of the address that you put in the browser of where this app is gonna be browsed to. So that's where we get the page two from. Okay, so we got that. Now let's try running it again. What I like to do in this situation is I like to split this on the right. That way I always have it in another place. And I just run it here. Oh, I forgot to stop the other thing. I always forget that. Let's try it again. Okay, we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to open that up as a new tab on the other screen. Let's see if we can get the page two like we did the other time. And we should be able to. Yes, we can. Good stuff. So... We've proven out the uh, hello world type thing. Now let's start doing some more sophisticated things. Because in a real world situation, yes, these are isolated processes, but there's gonna be a need to pass information back and forth potentially if we wanna link certain features together. So in the context of the shiny cow stuff, maybe if the user had clicked on a certain streamer entry you might want to know that about that that person they clicked on if they go to another part of the brochure version of the app so the way we'll mimic that here is we're gonna augment our our um, first page with um, a more uh, traditional shiny input so that we can bring that out into the second part of the app So we're not going to do anything that fancy here. We're just going to do um, radio input, or radio buttons. Since I'm not in the module, I actually don't have to do the NS for namespacing. That's going to be <laughs> hard to get used to sometimes. I always do modules for everything. Um, call it rad. Shoot some cool stuff. Okay, let's do our choices. Oh, look, uh, GitHub Copilot is going to give me the first three letters of the alphabet. Why not? We'll, we'll go with it. Um, it was selected. It didn't get that right. But hey, hey, yeah, very good. Um, we'll make a little more distinct. We'll do an inline version of it. Oh, Copilot's doing better than usual today. All right. Good. I think we got that. Let me show you a comma here. Okay. We got our radio buttons here. I think that's all we need. We'll make sure this works first before we go further. Yep. A, B, C. Got that. Okay. So now, what I want to do with this is I want to pass that on 
to the second page, but the first step, of course, is to grab the value of that input as something. What I like to do in these cases is kind of to think about the future of this. Um, I'm going to say, uh, grab choice. I'm going to make this a reactive. Like I do in typical practice, and we're gonna make sure that input is uh, is actually present. Then we're just gonna return the choice that they select as that input rad. Simple enough. And then we gotta start figuring out, okay, how do we how do we return this out? So let's go back to some learning here. Go back to the uh, README and see if they talk about passing things back and forth. Um, I'm not going to deal with the redirect stuff. Um, request handlers, this is all kind of web, web dev um, lingo here about what's the user kind of browsing to that might be something we look at down the road but i'd rather figure out a way to um pass information so i'm seeing if there's an easy way to do that here so cookies i don't think is what i want i may go back to that maybe i skim through it um Okay, this is this is kind of the high level design philosophy here. Um, this is important. He mentions in the second paragraph here that there's no data persistence when you navigate from one page of the brochure app to the other. So, yeah, that's interesting. We need to add a session ID, kind of like a cookie. Um, you can use it with JavaScript um, and need some backend store. Oh, wow. So we're really getting, getting fancy here with um, possibly using a database backend like MongoDB or something like SQLite as just more of a file-based system. Hmm. Part of getting a little freaked out already, um, but maybe it's just more just being new to this. I kind of want to see if there's any... Okay, I kind of see where they're going with this. So in this example, Colin has uh, text input and saving it to go to page two. Okay, so... He sets a cookie with the... Um, he has a, another package called Gluton. I can't, I, I can't, I can't name things worth a lick, but Colin's got me beat on a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> so, so, okay, so this app's a little more sophisticated. We're gonna, we're probably gonna replicate some of this. Um, so the part I'm confused about here is, the nav links at the top. Where should that go? Because in my um, golem setup, I have separate scripts for each page. But maybe that needs to be like, where is nav links actually going here? Oh, it's in it's in the oh, OK, it's in the page um, functions. OK, I got it. I got it. I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, I actually that's what I wanted to say. I was thinking salads or croutons because that's always what I, my parents would get when we eat out. Um, I don't know if glouton has any French uh, ties to it, but okay, I see. I see where this is going. So I actually like that idea. I think we are going to um, mimic this um, for my Hello World app here. So let's first just get that nav bar in there, or navigation headings in there, and then we'll get back to reincorporating that. So 
at the risk of duplication, we're just going to put it at the top of each of the page um, functions here. And we're going to put that in um, after the headings. That will go here. And we'll do the same thing with page two. Make sure that stuff plays nicely. I got that goes in here, not in the upper part. All right, let's see if that plays nicely. Okay, so now this will be a way that I can navigate between the two brochure pages in VS Code. At least I think of, yes, it did. Okay. So I can easily toggle back and forth. Now I don't have to hop back and forth to the external browser all the time. Okay, so we've got that part. Um, oh, I forgot to take out the trailing commas here. Get those out of here. So the goal for me now is to pass the choice of the radio button in the first page into the second page. So we might have to invest into that, uh, the Gluton package and actually install that into our setup. So let's kill the shiny app and use my favorite RM package for dependencies. So I think I need to check if Gluton is on Cran or not. Um, you can install. Oh, it's it's on GitHub. So okay, so that means that the way we reference it is um, using uh, Colin's uh, GitHub repo. Okay, let's throw that in. Very fast. I love it when it's fast. Then we're going to use that into our description file. We use, use dev package since it's a GitHub package. This time we just type the name of it and we're all set. Cool. Okay, so now it's going to be tracked for the future. Um, so we got Gluton now. And then we're going to start setting up the uh, infrastructure for this. And we're right think that has to go um where should that go this is actually a interesting point see in a traditional golem app where you had the app server file and the app ui file you would um put this kind of logic of like overall um, kind of back-end setup in the app server file. We don't really have that here. Now, let me um, look here for a second. Okay, I'm going to go back to the uh, readme here because this is the part where I'm a little stumbling here. Where do I put that cookie stuff for a golem map? So I'm going to see if he has examples that are based with golem. This might be a... Okay, so this might be what I needed. It's, um, this looks like a golem map here. Yep, yeah, okay. So let's see how they set it up here um, aha okay this is a much more sophisticated example but he actually does have an app server file after all so maybe I shouldn't have gotten rid of that interesting let's see what the App UI has. Huh. 
So it's contrary to what the readme says. The readme said we didn't need those bits for a goal map, but yet they are here. Now, sometimes when you see these things, you want to look at the, um, the timestamp of the commits and see if this came before or after the edits to the readme. So I guess the best way we can do that is let's go back to the main repo. Let's look at the readme here and see when this took place. This took place much more recently. This is on February. So my guess is that that example that we were just looking at was from nine months ago. Or was that? No, I'm getting confused. This is February. We better just look at the commits. <laughs> the high level here. I want to make sure I get this right. Redock, redock. way apps are built. Okay, we're, yeah, we're getting in the weeds a little bit here, but I want to see if there's any, when that example was updated, maybe I'll go back to that in more detail. That was in the inst folder. This is definitely long, longer than what we saw in the um, app source. That was like six months ago. This is nine months ago. So okay, let's let's see what see what we can do. Is there any special in app? Uh, no, there isn't. Um, okay, well, I got a couple ideas. We'll we'll try stuff out here and see. I'm going back to that. Uh, bigger example we're gonna create the storage system I'm not sure if we have cache available let me um, check on that Go back to VS code here oh we do okay cool so let's get that somewhere in here um i'm thinking that should go uh, well let's let's look at the help page maybe that's a better stuff let's see a brochure app what is that about um no, if i broke my uh our help system here. Oh, I have to refresh this. I always have to refresh it after the initial installation. So let's look at brochure. Wait, where's brochure? I have to rebuild it again. I thought I had it in here. Thanks. May not be a manual page for any of this yet. <laughs> that could very well be. Um, although brochure should show up in my list here. So maybe I just was. No, it's not there. Let's clear it and restart it. There we are. We got it now. Okay. I guess it was. Um... Okay. Now we got it. Okay. Brochure app. All right. So. Okay. So, it has a few different parameters here. I haven't explored all of them yet, but I think the key here is maybe this on start. A function that will be called before the app is actually run. So maybe I just need to make a function out of the setup of that cookie stuff and then it will be available elsewhere. Maybe that's the way we do it. But I'll just make sure there isn't any... Um... It's a set cookie thing. I'm just... Yeah, that doesn't really help me there. Okay, so let's... Let's... I'm um, sorry, I'm jumping around here. Let's, um, let's try the on-start stuff. So that would be... 
on start equal on start. Oh, okay. So that it, it's kind of like Golem has the run app, run app then calls the brochure app. So we have to put this somewhere. So we're just going to make a separate script that just has the um, the cookie stuff. Um, so I'll copy that that we saw from the bigger example. Let's see if that actually works Let's save that all right so just gonna call it um start with these no arguments, we just want to get it going here. Um, whoops. I think I messed some up, but it's not sure what. Okay, no, I think we're okay. I'll keep the library statement in there for now. But I want to try this as like the, um, the startup piece of it and then we're gonna put that here um what did i start up underscore cookies i think that can do it okay let's see if that at least if it, if it breaks something we should know right away so let's See if that does anything haywire here. <laughs> yep, it did break something. Um, error in app parts on the attempt to apply non function. Oh, you'll... Okay. Um, maybe I don't need the parentheses. Maybe I just need this. Let's see. Okay, that may have been the ticket. We just have to reference the function by name. And hopefully that gets that um, cookie stuff in the system. So, okay, let's do that. And then now there's another function from the readme that will take the... Um, or is that a, um, I need to see. Where he uses that, um, other bit here. Okay, cookie sets up function. We just have to have that as a separate script, so. Or a separate file. We're just gonna be lazy here. We're gonna put it in this in this uh, same script here. And then this is apparently gonna fetch stuff and then add it as a cookie in the browser session. And then for debugging, it's gonna print it and then return out the reactive value that it goes into. Okay. So, then, we need to do a couple things. We need to record the choice of the um, radio button as part of this whole cookie setup here. And then we need to have that available for passing into the other part of the app. But I probably want a button to enforce the, um, the saving for now. So what we'll do in this page one is we're going to have a, an action button here, like the other example. Save that cookie. All right, so got that. 
I will make sure things didn't break with that. Oh, Tan, welcome. How are you all? How are you doing? Um, always great to have you here. We're, we're learning stuff today. Um, brand new package to me called brochure for a multi-page shiny app that I might want to do with um, with the shiny cow project down the road. But we're just going through a, a readme right now and kind of playing with the example and putting it into Golem to really make my life a lot harder. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're learning. So, okay, we've got the button there. Now we actually have to do something with the button here. Um, so let's try that out. So we're going to need an observe event in the server side function. And then we'll start um, doing the, the bits here. Oh, you're out, huh? Yeah, I'm still uh, working remotely um, for the time being. Okay. Okay, I think I see what we do here. We're gonna place that bit in here, and of course, it completely mangled my quick read. The indentation went. Completely bonkers on that. Wow. Okay, now we're going to change this to be the... Um, actually, we just call it Rad Choice since we're going to react a lot of it. And then... I don't want to do a redirect yet. I want to just kind of keep it... Just save it. And then we'll make sure that it's available in the page two of the of the app so that should take care of things <laughs> yeah that will be the part when i actually in fact i probably will have to go back into the office i'm sure at some point in the fall um that will feel weird but um at least at the company i work in now they're gonna enforce everybody to wear a mask no matter what, because our our state itself is mandating that, so it's certainly certainly different. Um, but we were supposed to have like a team building thing for my immediate team, kind of at the end of September, but now they changed that to virtual. So yeah, I, I won't be there um, unless I have an important meeting. Um, okay, so let's go to page two of this. And this is the part where I have to somehow import in the cookie thing. And it looks like the first step is we've got to... Um, we're going to add a server-side part of this. We don't have a server-side yet, so we've got to fix things up here. So we got UI here. Now we're going to do the server part. Session. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew you were traveling, Monica. So I hope we all are, are still okay. Okay. Good, good. At least people were being smart on there. I uh, That's probably been, honestly, the part I've been most paranoid about is, thankfully, at least in my role, I don't have to travel a lot over than when I used to go to conferences. Which of course now most of those are virtual these days, um, but but yeah, it's it's uh, that's got to be a, a different experience. <laughs> um, so server, and we're gonna take advantage of this uh, cookie function that we had made. Well, that with no arguments, I believe, and then we're gonna okay, we're gonna augment the UI. Um, with uh, an output to verify that choice of the radio button. With a simple verbatim text output. Yep. Oh, barbecue pizza. Oh, you're making me hungry. That that sounds fun. Now that I can actually taste again, I when I make my pizza next time, I'll actually enjoy it. 
instead of feeling like I was eating cardboard the last time <laughs> that I had it during the, uh, the, the unfortunate uh, COVID effects. So, okay, so now we've got the cookies set. We're gonna get that rendered here and then we'll see if that actually worked. Hello, Isamor. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Um, I think you were on the me and Tan and others were watching with great interest the uh, finals of Slice last night. Um, riveting stuff. And um, I do admit when um, D Rob or David Robinson threw out the shiny app at the end, I'm like, is there anything this guy can't do? Like that was going to be my gimmick for being on season two. If I make it on season two, I'm going to do a bunch of shiny stuff for my visuals. And of course he whips one out in five, 10 minutes. So it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely enjoying that, that aspect, Monica. I didn't, you, you take these things for granted until they're gone. So <laughs> that's for sure. Um, okay. So now we got to get the content of that cookie here. Um, Nick went underscore data my stream with 20 Well, speaking views. of, Nick, oh, thank you very much. Um, we were just talking about you. Um, <laughs> not to time that any better. Welcome. I was actually watching the early parts of that cool hangout you all had. Um, so thank, thank you, you um, for everything you did with Slice this season. And I'll certainly be tuning in and what you have in store for next. So... What you all are seeing here is I'm I'm actually learning something brand new in the shiny space, which those of you that were watching or are, are being a part of the community last night, you saw a D Rob whip out a shiny app at the very end to um, <laughs> to seal the deal, as they say. And now we're doing some cool shiny stuff tonight with a new package I've never used before that gets into more um, cool web stuff with multi-page uh, setups. So. So what we're doing now is I'm using this new package called Brochure to have a Shiny app that has separate processes for each um, for each tab of the UI because I want to do this with the Shiny Cal project um, um, very, very soon. So yeah, thanks Nick and, and thanks again for everything you did and we will be in touch with uh, maybe, a, maybe a podcast interview. <laughs> Um, that would be fun. Okay, let's let's get the show on the road. Let's see if I can get that um, that that input from the radio button into here, and we'll see if I reference these objects right. I'll be shocked if this works the first time. All right, well, just mimic the example here we'll just do a face instead of face zero and see what that does um okay i think that's all there is to it so we got the server stuff cookies set and let's see this will be interesting here we go okay so the plot is not what we care about what we care about is this stuff. So we're gonna save, and of course we, we've had a crash. Um, <laughs> good, here we go, we're gonna learn here. Error and observe input save object cache system not found. Okay, so that's simply um, something we need to fix in our observe event from the first page. So, Cache system is what it couldn't find. Okay, so cache system came from this script here where I basically um, did the startup cookies function, but this, the problem with this object, this is basic R stuff here, this cache system object is trapped in this startup cookies function. So the question is, where do we put this? Maybe, maybe we put this somewhere else. And I was being too greedy with this, um, with this um, execution of it. So what we could do is 
is we can try not putting it at on start. Let's go back to null for this. And what we may do here is we're going to... Ooh, this is kind of tricky, though. It's in the brochure app function. These are basically parameters. It's not really executing something here. But maybe, maybe what we do, let's make this simpler for us, is instead of um, doing it here, we do it in the function over here. Kind of like what we did up here. Maybe that's the easier approach. I was making it too hard on ourselves. So we're just going to throw that over here in the first page script. Well, the package here, we're going to throw it in here. Now it should be part of the environment for the um, for the page um, scripts here. So let's see if that did the trick. Okay, we're going to try saving that again. And yes, we have another crash. Object R not found. Oh, lovely. Okay. So. Oh, oh. Cookie set. Okay, so we gotta fix some things here. So I cache system cell. Oh, okay. So in the example that Colin had, he set up a reactive value for page one. Duh. Okay. That goes up here. Okay. Cool. All right, we got that going. And um, that should take care of that error. And we'll see if we get that fixed when we save. Good. Okay. Here comes the moment of truth. Well, it's interesting. You see in the console here, and um, it printed out the, the hash of that cookie. So we know that function actually executed. So that was from the print statement. Now, let's go to page two. <laughs> Okay, um, that's an interesting error. Error invalidate key, invalid key. Only lowercase letters and numbers are allowed. What in the world is that about? Okay, um, so A11, welcome to the stream. You're asking, yeah, this is definitely VS Code. Um, I, I, for my setup, VS Code has been a little faster to work with than our studio. But that's because I'm doing some pretty esoteric things in this streaming box. You know, this has been more of kind of like a challenge to myself to try something different and to really compare and contrast what these different development environments are like. Um, the what I am liking about VS Code so far is that it can integrate multiple languages very nicely, like Python stuff and R stuff. Um, and the best news of all is if you all have been watching the R bombs that have been happening in some of the sliced episodes, I have never had anything like that bring down VS Code in my dev setup, ever. Um, I've been doing a, I did a couple tiny model things just in some spare time I had a while back in VS Code, and as long as I had all the dependencies installed for the packages, everything ran just fine. So that would be my plan in if I get on Slice, is to actually use both VS Code and R Studio interchangeably, depending on what I'm trying to do. But with VS Code, I can also hook that up to virtual nodes on a, say, AWS cluster or things like that and have it look like it's native, but it's really not. Um, so that's why I want to learn this stuff now so that I can be ready for some cool high performance things that are just easier to do in things like VS Code than they would be in our studio, the uh, the default version. There is some stuff for the professional version you can get um, for HPC stuff, but it's still a little more limited to what the flexibility I have in VS Code here. So that's why I'm trying this stuff out. And so far in my experience, I haven't had any 
catastrophes because of my dev container setup, I control the full stack and I can easily in a Docker file mix and match system dependencies and R packages and stuff like that. So it's um, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, great, great questions. So now we got to figure out what the heck this invalid validate key thing is all about. I feel like I may have broke something, but I just don't know what. Um, I feel like it may be a an object name that maybe I needed to um oh yeah there's definitely stuff I missed um potentially in the other the other bits here let me look at the cookie set function again let's see if I um oh the paste zero maybe that is it yeah maybe I in fact what I want to do is I I don't want to do the paste stuff I just want to I just want to take the the cookie itself. Yeah, let's let's do that. I think that will make things easier. No need for that text stuff. All right. So I think that's going to be the name of the cookie, and then the choice, which is simply an A, B, or C. Yeah, and I'm using two of the three right now, Tan. The, the co-pilot is working most of the time. And um, obviously the Docker stuff. But, um, well, you still get the environment pane. It just looks a little different. But you can get data frames. You can get objects from here. So right now, because I'm doing the Golem stuff, you don't see it. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, get, I get your point. So. Okay, so now I've, I've made this a little more... Um, to be safe though, let's do a rec on rad choice, just in case. Okay, let's see if that solves it. Try that again. Okay, save it. There we go. Nope. Thanks. Still Thanks the same air. Well, thank you for following A11. Much appreciated. Um, always happy to have that. Um, invalid key. Good grief. Where is that coming from? Oh, there's another page zero somewhere. Yeah, I missed I missed the reference to it. Okay. I think that's in page two. Yep, yep. It, it should be just this. Okay. Yeah, let's let's do this. Let's do this get this weird thing out of here so I think that should take care of it I've been saying that like for five minutes now so <laughs> let's see all right let's try that again we saved it and okay well the different error now it says key missing it's just okay um I think there was something that happened. I think when I visit the page, it does something right away. And then my observe event, um, like did it twice or something? Okay, I need to, I need to read more about this. Um, we're getting close though. If I can just get this cookie thing solved, I'll consider it a success tonight. Um, make my view better. So, okay, so cookie set has a reactive values. When we observe it being run, we fetch stuff. If there are no storage ones already, we generate it. That gives it a uh, brochure cookie. We print it out. Okay, we return it. Then in the first page, we, we set it. And the set function from Gluton is supposed to just take that choice and 
save it. Then page two, when we display it, we grab it. Okay, so when in doubt, we go to our browser and then we um, see, we may have to look at the Gluton package in a little more detail in here. Um, in my view here. Let's see where that goes. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, okay. Now you notice what it did there. It did it right away. I don't want it to do it right away. I want it to just only do it when I need it. Well, let's see if we had a if we have a page two here already. But well, it's still the same error, the key missing, okay. Well, thanks Monica for joining. Yeah, I'll be um, probably signing off pretty soon too, even though if I can't get this solved, I just wanna get that cookie out there. Um, I feel like I may have copy pasted something wrong from the readme which wouldn't be a wouldn't be a, a shock <laughs> but in page two they do set it but they grab it you know what i'll do i'll just um i'll mimic the the example more verbatim um We'll put a text input in here, like in the README, and make sure that part works. And if that still doesn't work, then that means I definitely screwed something up, but I just don't know what yet. Um, then what we'll do is we'll do the observe event. And we'll, we'll do the uh, paste, paste zero stuff because it'll be a text input. We'll put that in here. Give our rad choice stuff. Okay, make sure the parentheses match. Yep. wreck on that input. Actually, maybe we don't do the wreck just in case. Make it as consistent as possible with this. Um, and then we go back to the other page and we'll make this uh, mimic the, the other one. the indentation is absolutely haywire okay so that is basically the same thing as the um oh gosh oh gosh i think i may have found it um in the brochure app function i need to put in the app ui oh this is silly um, in a lot of shiny UI or other packages, you have to make sure you declare your usage of certain resources. And one of them is this. This gets me sometimes. You have to declare it in the UI so it knows about it. And then I think this will, this will hopefully fix it. Okay, so we're going to enter something here. Save it. Page two. Okay, we're at the browser. It's going to look dangerously. Oh, come on. It's still missing. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> okay, I need to start debugging this a little more in detail here. But, um,. It's this cache system get stuff. That's definitely going crazy here. 
Okay, so maybe I just have to go back into the debugger. Let's make sure my observe event. Oh, I didn't save the first page, did I? That may have been why. Okay, try that again. See, the nice thing about our studio is it'll auto save the files when you're running a Shiny app in the typical UI. VS Code will not. So if you forget to do something, um, it, won't, it won't do that. Okay, we got... Oh, should be. Did I do paste zero on the other one too? Well, I did. Okay. There's setting. That's always a cryptic error. Um, let's put the browser in here too. All right. All right, let's see what's good in here. Now, where we are is we're at this step here. So I'm curious what we get from this cache system object. Oh, it's not gonna let me auto complete the, uh, the, uh, the routines here. So cache system is from the cache pocket or package. Easy for me to say. Probably need to look at the help stuff for that. What is what is that all about? Get uh, this cache object. So I think in real practice, Colin would put all this in like a database or something, but this is just a way to do it on disk as like a, a cache kind of setup. It's also one that's in memory. It doesn't really tell me how to, how to do it. It's just I took the code from the readme. Mm. Let's go back to the uh, first page. So, but first, maybe the first step, let's see what that um, R dollar sign cook or sure cookie does. Okay, so that is the idea of it. So we're getting somewhere. And what this is trying to do is it's saying, okay, take that, paste it with text. Just run that, make sure that works. Yeah, so I mean, it's saving that. So why would that fail? Air setting value for key. Wow, this is really something. Um, what's wrong with that key though? I'll show you the, um, the readme again. I'm gonna look at this again, make sure I didn't miss anything silly here. So I've got cookies set. I copied that verbatim. So that is there. Add cookies, for sure cookie is session ID. We print it out. And all this did is it said, okay, I got text input, save it, we initialize the cookie set. There's a, kind of like a pseudo reactive value. Yeah, it's a reactive values. When we hit the save button, Use the session ID. Input text. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Yeah, I see it now. I'm supposed to have the, the text <laughs> Oh, that means I definitely need more sleep. Okay, that's why. I didn't actually tell a little saving. 
let's... That should cover it. Not gonna do anything, it doesn't know what to say. Alright, so I'm gonna feel confident here and take that browser out. Let's see if that did the trick. Save it, good, good. Oh gosh, okay, we got that part. So, last step, let's switch it back to that radio input and take out the text stuff to make sure we can just get a, uh, a shiny input value that's more traditional. And if that works, then we're we're in good shape. Okay, so, oh gosh, I forgot to show you VS Code, of course. Um, sorry for that. Um, but we'll run that one more time so y'all can see that, that it actually did work. Um, okay, so we got enter text, yes for that save it go to page two and there it is so it found it from the cache thing and then now we can go back home let's see we can try changing the text again save that go to page two yep it's still there okay and every time we're doing this we're saving that cookie over and over again and it's kind of um updating that uh, Yuka with data. Hello. Yeah, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you. We're winding down here because I've been working with a new package called Brochure to do a multi-page Shiny app and my objective tonight was to get a Hello World type example going and making sure I could pass inputs back and forth between the pages. So yep, it is Shiny, but it's a wrapper on top of Shiny that is very experimental at this point but i want to use it for some projects uh later on so okay now that we've got the text input working we're gonna switch this back to um to the, using the radio button instead wreck that then now I think I can just keep that as it is that pay zero text stuff I don't think that'll mess things up because it just takes the value it doesn't really care about the ID of it we'll see okay different value All right, page two, it got it. Okay, let's do C, save that, page two, we got C. And let's do A, save that, and we got A. Good, finally, finally. <laughs> we, uh, that was, a, that was a heck of a journey just to get inputs passed back and forth so you can kind of see why Colin mentions that you have to think a lot differently if you make an app or brochure versus making it with traditional shiny where it's very it's more intuitive how you pass like a an input value from one server side part to another server side part or even passing stuff from modules one to the other this is a different ball game you have to have some kind of system that can take the values and let you interrogate it based on some unique ID, which is what this gluton and cookie stuff is doing. So certainly that was um, that was quite different. But now I know that it is in theory possible to pass this stuff um, back and forth. Um, so yeah, um, a lemon has a great question. Having any sort of guide on my dev container setup? Well, I'm glad you asked about that. I certainly do. Um, the best way to find that would be the going to my um, GitHub, and I'll put the link in here after I um, get it browsed here. I have a repository called our dev projects, which is where all of this is coming from. And I use this as what I call a template repository. So that every time I start a new R project, for like my shiny dev series or just my general R coding fun, 
I started from this repo and inside it has this folder called .dev container. And within that are all the bits to get VS Code to use the Docker container setup and our studio server itself as a Docker container. So the readme has a whole bunch of um, information here and also a link to my one of my first ever live streams where I walked through how it kind of looked at, at the time. Some of the things I've enhanced quite a bit since then, but you can check out that live stream. It's linked on the readme if you want to see how I was thinking about that at the time I built it. So. So yeah, definitely check that out. Certainly give me feedback on the issue tracker if you see any things that need attention. I've already been working on fixing ways of passing environment variables uh, for some of my work stuff, and I haven't got that fully perfect yet, but I made some headway. Um, cool. All right. Um, so with that, I think I've achieved my mission for tonight of at least getting getting a brochure app set up with with uh, golem and trying something a little more outside the box so even though it's a very silly app the fact that i could pass these through not just traditional shiny ways but through the uh, brochure way um, was certainly a big step in the right direction so I'm gonna call that a win. And I will probably uh, um, wind things down here, but I'll mention um, before I sign off here that if you've been liking what you see um, and you missed the live sessions, if you're watching this later on, definitely check out the YouTube channel. I got a great playlist going of all the live stream stuff, but of course, the Shiny Dev series doesn't have that, just have that. It's got interviews with leaders of the Shiny community, and we have all those on the playlist as well. I need to reorder it. But um, our last session was with um, Carson Siebert, author of Plotly, and the key mo developer of the BS Live framework for theming your Shiny apps in a really elegant way which I used in the shiny contest stuff I did earlier this year. Even as a judge for it, I still wanted to have fun with it. So Carson goes into all the cool tech that he did um, to set all that up. I had a great conversation with him. Um, I'll just put a link in the chat if you all wanna watch that, watch that later on. Um, really cool guy. Um, the whole shiny team is full of really cool people. So I'm fortunate to have at least talked virtually with almost all of them and they always give me cool stuff to learn about. All right, so um, I think with that, I will um, close up here. Um, like I said, I have to be up much earlier these days, so I'll probably um, won't do a raid tonight, but certainly thank Nick for the raid earlier. And um, feel free to send me a shout on Twitter or even at, um, um, the um, shinydevseries.com site. I have a contact page there. And um, if you're interested in keeping up with the art community, I always like to plug this at the end. Um, you've seen a little bit of messages here and there, um, but I definitely want you to check out um, Art Weekly. This is the, you might say, kind of like the, um, the weekly curation of the coolest stories the resources we've seen in the art community. And there's a set of us that curate this every week. Um, if those of you that have been sticking around that watched Slice before, uh, the very famous Tony, Tony L. Harbar, um, is part of the curating group here. Um, so it's great to have him on board and we I, I really enjoy doing that. And uh, every Tuesday morning, sometimes Wednesday morning, I release a podcast that talks about the three or two highlighted stories of the issue, getting more in-depth in it, getting you more behind the behind the post, getting more background on it. And that's been going on for over a year now. We just passed the year mark recently. So um, definitely have a listen to that if you want to keep up with the community stuff. So, alrighty, I'm going to sign off here thanks a lot all of you for joining and um we'll be exploring brochure even more in a 
future streams and maybe i'll have another stream on top of the wednesday ones because i am thinking of doing some more general art content and i'll definitely spread the word out there so thank you so much you all have a great night and um hope to see you all again next time so uh bye for now thanks for joining <laughs>